Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by not Drew Galloway, Derek Young. Great, just hot start to uh, this. <laughs> Been uh, so used to to Drew, I didn't even think about that. Uh, look, basketball season has come to a close for K State, and that means now all the attention uh, for the time being, because obviously the portal will be hot in basketball, but most of the attention will be shifted towards spring football, which got underway. Two weeks ago, just before everybody left on spring break, the Cats got two practices in, but they really started it in earnest yesterday. And, D.Y., that was the first kind of open practice of the year that media was in to see. Now, it's not you're not watching the whole thing. You're not getting to see, like, the meat and potatoes of practice, but you can still get something out of the little things and the, the basic necessities that come with it. So, uh, what what was probably the biggest observation you had yesterday? Was it somebody's size, how they looked, or what group they were with? Uh, anything that stood out to you? Yeah. For what we see, it's more like the appetizer, not necessarily the entree would be how I would put it. <laughs> you know, 20% of what we see is probably stretching, although they did – do some 11 on 11 stuff while we were there. And from that kind of able to glean who was not necessarily all that active, more so the guys that maybe are recovering from surgery and not going to participate in the spring or guys that are not even hurt, but are just kind of chillaxing, mostly taking mental reps. Um, well, I think they call it almost veteran rest and that, I mean, a few of those were like Desmond Purnell. He was around, hopping around, clearly 100%, but not necessarily taking any physical reps. The same can be said for, you know, VJ Payne at safety, guys that probably took a ton of snaps last year that they don't necessarily think taking that many in the spring is, is all that advantageous or beneficial to them. And then you got guys that are, that are noticeably banged up or re- – from what has already occurred or just recovering from the the toll of the season, whether that be, you know, Uso Sayamalo, Colby McAllister, you know, you remember the uh, the season ending injuries to Asa Newsom and Jay Clifton. Both of those are not available. True freshman running back Davon Rice wasn't available on Tuesday um, when we were watching practice. So those are some of the things, but when you see the 11 on 11 stuff, you have to take all of that into consideration as well. Carver Willis was another guy that was kind of hopping around, clearly not really injured, but getting some veteran rest as well. So take take it for what it's worth, but the offensive line seemed like in the first unit, for the most part, was you know from left to right. I want to say it was Easton Kilty at left tackle, Hadley Panzer at left guard, Sam Hecht at center, Taylor Portier at right guard, and the right tackle. Uh, was John Pastore. So the tackles were Kilty and Pastore. Are those the two guys that are going to be the tackles? Uh, that, that remains to be seen, you know, because obviously those are the likely two choices if Carver Willis is not really taking any snaps. With the way that things have, have kind of been structured, one of the other notes that people probably are interested in, and like everybody, it's, uh, you know, is Avery Johnson still looking uh, incredible like he did last year and then when he played? And I think the answer to that has been yes, probably, uh, yep. based on your reaction and what I've seen from others. But what about the guys behind them? Was was there anything that you could kind of get from how the backup quarterback situation might look? Because, it, I mean, totally different reasons, but same kind of scenario where last year, the more intriguing part about what was going on at that position was, okay, how does it fall in line for who's going to be number two? Because number one is so solidified. Yeah. Number one solidified. Once again, it's interesting. It's been basically solidified in every year under Chris Kleiman. Uh, the first two years, I think it was like our guy is definitely Skylar Thompson. Uh, when he left and Will Albert was hoping to be that guy. And instead they brought in Adrian Martinez as a transfer and said, this is definitely our guy. Uh, and then Adrian leaves and Will Howard, you know, from winning the Big 12 the prior year. This is definitely our guy. And Will Howard leaves and now it's like Avery Johnson. This is definitely our guy. So it's interesting that in every single offseason under Chris Kleiman, Kansas State really hasn't had a quarterback battle. They just kind of anointed that guy. I don't know if it's just how the, the 
pieces fell into place, how the puzzle came together, or that's just something that's kind of a philosophy under Chris Kleiman that you need your QB1 to be decided and get the entire offseason to take command of the team. I wouldn't be surprised that that was maybe a philosophical approach, to be quite honest. Um, but we know now Avery Johnson is clearly that guy. The number two is probably uh, a slam dunk right now at the moment to be Jacob Knuth. Uh, I think he was definitely the next guy up. And then, you know, we saw Kellen Samantic taking reps as well. And Max Marsh is back with the quarterbacks again, mostly because you probably need him because you, you only had two or three guys otherwise. So, you know, Max Marsh has kind of been just messed around with his entire career, uh, whatever they need. So, um, I will say he must be one of the most selfless players on the team based on what he keeps continuing to do for Kansas State and whenever they get into a little bit of a crunch because obviously the guy that I think his name's Hayden Hutchison that's a walk-on is not not with the team yet. He'll, he'll probably be a guy that joins them in June like the rest of the true freshmen that are oh, enrolled early. Uh, Blake Barnett's banged up from what he had in his final season of high school. So right now I think it's easily Jacob Knuth. There seems to be definitely a gap between him and Kellen Simonsek, who's the, the walk-on that they added from Washburn. But, you know, based on what we've heard and, and what now what we've seen, it would not be a surprise for them to maybe keep an eye out when the transfer portal opens in April and perhaps grab another. Another big note offensively for K-State that maybe you were able to see because you this is also a good time you talk about, like, the you know a good chunk of what you see is like stretching and, and some of this other stuff but in that you get to see how the coaches interact with the players and everything else and one of the new faces is Matt Wells so what was it like seeing Matt Wells uh in the the true coaching environment for the first time up close yeah just he seemed he was more of like a personable like uh relax I would I don't know if relaxed is the right word personal calm demeanor on the practice field, a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversation that wasn't necessarily heated or, you know, or very animated. Uh, a lot of just maybe like a teaching cues, teaching points. It'd be interesting to see how he's in the meeting room. It's probably a little bit different, but definitely not a guy that's definitely very loud or, or incredibly, you know, boisterous on the football field. I don't think we saw any of those moments. Now, Maybe that happens when we're not there. Uh, you know, I don't know. Connor Riley used to be that way, pretty animated, uh, pretty colorful, and how he kind of operated as an assistant coach during practice. You could tell uh, that he probably understands his role now, his new role as the primary play caller, the offensive coordinator for Kansas State, and he's kind of dialed that back some now that he's more of a CEO, not the CEO because that's obviously Chris Kleiman, but kind of the offensive CEO. So you could tell he's dialed back some of his, you know, I wouldn't say theatrics, but, you know, colorfulness, emotion. You know, he was a – I think you are able to kind of let loose a little bit more as an assistant coach, but when you got more responsibility, you have the entire offense at your disposal. You don't have just one position group. You have all of the position groups, every single offensive player, and understanding that what works for one position doesn't work for the other. So you got to find that middle ground. Probably feels like a lot of offensive talk to people, but uh, you know anybody that's followed along is aware that uh, you know offense is what I think pays the bills in football. Receiver yeah. is a is an important part of what K State will have happen this season. Uh, they added Dante Cephas, and then obviously Jace Brown and Keegan Johnson are probably the top two incumbents. So, uh, what did you see out of the receivers yesterday? I like what I see. I like what I saw on paper. I think we've kind of discussed that, that this has the chance to be one of the more talented wide receiver rooms that they've had in recent memory, maybe even a little bit of a distant memory, to be quite honest, because, you know, the 17, you know, when they had Byron Pringle, Dalton Schoen, that group's probably a little bit underrated. When they had Cade Warner and Malik Knowles, that group's pretty underrated, I think, in terms of what just what those groups ended up accomplishing and, and probably overachieved what their talent suggested that they should. Um Although now looking back on it, that Dalton Schoen, Dalton Schoen, Isaiah Zuber, Byron Pringle group is pretty talented. Uh, you know, yeah. Dalton Schoen's one of the best Canadian football league players uh, in the entire league. And then, you know, Isaiah Zuber had a cup of coffee in the NFL. Byron Pringle, I think, is still in the NFL somewhere. I think he's bounced around a little bit at this point. So that group probably 
uh, was underestimated, not just in production, but in terms of talent. But this group has a chance to be, I don't know if I'll say special, but really, really good if they all reach close to their potential because Dante Cephas has obviously got a lot of potential. He flashed that at Kent State, and um, even though it kind of went downward a little bit at Penn State, uh, the, the talent is clearly still there. And He was in that first group along with Keegan Johnson, who was – flashed last year for Kansas State, even though he didn't put it all together. And if he puts it all together, he's probably one of the best receivers in the Big 12. Jace Brown probably played like one of the best receivers in the Big 12 for the last four or five games. And that doesn't count bringing all the experience that Jaden Jackson has back when he was kind of the touchdown maker through the first four or five games last year. And also doesn't take into account two guys that you're hoping continue to grow because, the again, the ceiling – the sky's the limit almost If you, when you discuss guys like Trey Spivey and Andre Davis, two guys that I think they still have pretty high hopes for and are hope they hope can ascend and become that fifth guy, sixth guy. And, and then Ty Bowman, I don't think – it wouldn't be a surprise to see one of those walk-ons or at least walk-on turn scholarship guys have a little bit of a role, uh, whether that be Ty Bowman, who is certainly going to be a fixture on special teams, or Erwin Nash – who has a little bit of size to him and can really run as well. So a deeper group than I think people were anticipating and potentially a very, very, well, it is a very talented group with the potential to actually translate that to the field. I remember we were going through that winter transfer portal and it seemed like Kansas State was set on adding two transfer wideouts. I just, I considering where they need to go elsewhere, I, I think – other positions warrant a lot more attention. I think that, that they could probably stay stay in pat right now at wide receiver. Yeah, well, so in, in terms of the other side of the ball, then you mentioned some defensive names. Uh, what was there anything else defensively that that you make note of and kind of tuck away and think, okay, I see this. Uh, maybe that's interesting, or maybe I'll, I'll monitor it moving forward. At defense, there was just a lot more question marks, to be quite honest, and. There's a lot of guys not playing that could become a factor or that will become a factor, and there's still some holes to address. Uh, you don't know what you're going to have at corner outside of Keenan Garber and Jacob Parrish. You hope that Justice James continues to play well. I thought he flashed at times last year. Can be one of those guys, but you need more than that. And maybe it's one of the redshirt freshmen or actually sophomore in the case of Kenigel Thomas since he played more than four games last year. Um, and then, but you had VJ Payne getting veteran rest. You had Desmond Purnell getting veteran rest. Uso Sayamalo's injured and not playing much right now. Cody Stuffelbean is basically getting veteran rest at this point. Jay Clifton is hurt, uh, and you don't know if he's going to play because he's still considering going on a mission. Asa Newsom is hurt and not going. To, so defense, um, there's not a lot you can tell right now, but I guess glass half full you're getting a lot of the guys that you need to provide depth, a lot of reps this spring. Well, and I, I think there are questions defensively, but I don't think that like there's a, a wave of mass panic about what it will be when K-State does get it figured out. I think they have the guys that can at least, you know, compete at a good level, but you just don't know each spot yes. by spot what it's going to look like. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say you should be scared or be panicking about the defense, but there is a lot more uncertainty, and you do need some guys to emerge that haven't necessarily done that yet. You need some guys to get healthy, and you probably do need to grab – you're probably more in need of transfers in the spring on the defensive side than the offensive side. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Uh, the portal will be hopping in basketball as it always already is football it will be coming up in the very near future uh again so that's something to keep an eye on and we'll have you covered at k-state online so head over there find us at on three and stay locked in here on the kso youtube and podcast platforms we will be back tomorrow i promise drew will be with me this time uh i may just start the show with dy's name under him just to, you know out of fairness for everybody we'll have a little bit on k-state recruiting for you on the football side of things and then uh, next week, more open practice time, so more observations from that, and plenty of other coverage and thoughts from K-State football and basketball all throughout the offseason as we grind our way to a little over five months from now when games actually 
get back underway for K-State football. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online.